Baking and chemistry have a lot of things in common. One of those things is that both chemistry and baking use recipes. When baking, you follow a recipe that tells you a list of ingredients and how much of them to use. It tells you how to mix them together and what kind of product you're gonna make in the end, like a cake or a loaf of bread. This cake recipe calls for two eggs, one cup of flour, and half a cup of sugar. What if I only had one egg? Could I still make a cake? I could do it, I could just make a smaller cake. I could cut the recipe in half. So I would only use one egg, half a cup of flour, and a quarter cup of sugar, and I would make half a cake. So what if I wanted three cakes? Well, I would need six eggs, three cups of flour, and a cup and a half of sugar. Chemical equations work much like recipes. They describe the amount of reactants you need and how much product you can make. When we multiply or divide chemical equations like we did with the cake recipe, we're performing a skill called stoichiometry. It's a method of using a balanced chemical equation just like a recipe. We can use it to predict the amount of products we'll make or how many reactants we need. This lesson is all about stoichiometry. We'll learn in this lesson. First, we'll learn how to solve some simple stoichiometry problems using units of moles. Then we will learn how to solve more complex problems that involve a conversion from grams or liters in order to solve the problem. Magnesium reacts with oxygen gas to produce a solid white powder called magnesium oxide according to the following balanced chemical equation. If 9 moles of magnesium reacts with an excess of oxygen gas, how many moles of magnesium oxide will be produced? And how many moles of oxygen gas will react? To solve this problem, we're going to use a mole ratio. Mole ratios compare the amount of one substance to another substance based on the chemical equation. The chemical equation is just like a recipe. Notice that each part of this question compares one substance to another substance. Stoichiometry problems will always involve the comparison of two substances to each other. The amount of one of the substance will be known, and the amount of the other substance will be unknown. In the first part of this problem, we want to compare the amount of magnesium oxide that will be produced to the amount of magnesium that reacts. And in the second part of the problem, we'll compare the amount of oxygen gas required to the amount of magnesium that reacts. I can read the balanced chemical equation just like a recipe. It says that if I mix two moles of magnesium with one mole of oxygen, I'll get two moles of magnesium oxide. The amounts are given by these coefficients, the numbers in front of the symbols. For an example, if I want to make four moles of magnesium oxide, I would need four moles of magnesium and two moles of oxygen gas. I doubled the recipe. To solve this problem using mole ratios, we're gonna use these steps. First, we'll write down the known quantity, in this case, nine moles of magnesium. Second, we'll multiply this known quantity by a mole ratio that compares the unknown substance to the known substance. The mole ratio is a fraction that uses the recipe. The unknown substance, the substance that we're trying to solve for, always goes on the top of the mole fraction. And then the known substance, the one that we already know the amount of, goes on the bottom. So the unknown substance here is the amount of magnesium oxide, and the known substance is the amount of magnesium. We're going to compare those two amounts using the recipe. The recipe says there will be two moles of magnesium oxide for every two moles of magnesium. So our mole ratio is going to look like this, two moles of magnesium oxide over two moles of magnesium. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So I have nine moles of magnesium times two over two the moles of magnesium are going to cancel, and we're gonna be left with moles of magnesium oxide, which is what we want. Now, two over two is just one, so nine times one gives us nine moles of magnesium oxide. This answer makes sense because the recipe says we should get equal quantities of magnesium oxide as we have magnesium. The second part of the question compares oxygen gas to magnesium. We'll use the same system. The known quantity is nine moles of magnesium. We'll multiply that by the mole ratio that compares oxygen gas to magnesium. So the ratio is one mole of oxygen for two moles of magnesium. Nine times one half gives us 4.5 moles of oxygen gas. And this answer makes sense because the recipe says we should get exactly half as much oxygen gas as we need magnesium. The downside of balanced chemical equations is that they're written in terms of moles, but we don't measure moles in the laboratory. We measure grams or liters. So most of the time we need to convert the known quantities into moles before we can compare them to the unknown quantities. Here's an example. Propane burns in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor according to the following balanced chemical equation. If 45.3 grams of propane burns in an excess amount of oxygen, how many grams of water will be produced? The recipe says that for every one mole of propane, four moles of water will be produced. But we don't know how many moles of propane we're starting with. 
we know the grams of propane. To convert from grams to moles, we divide the amount in grams by the molar mass of the substance. So if the known quantity is not given in moles, we have to first convert it to moles. And then we can multiply it by the mole ratio that compares the two quantities to each other. Here are the steps that we need to follow. First, convert the known quantity to moles, multiply by the mole ratio that compares the unknown quantity to the known quantity based on the balanced chemical equation, and then convert your answer to the unit you want your answer in. I'm going to put this together in just one big long step. 45.3 grams of propane divided by the molar mass of propane. We need to check the periodic table to find the molar mass of each element in this compound. There are three carbon atoms and each carbon has a molar mass of 12. So that's 36 plus eight hydrogen atoms. Each has a molar mass of one, so that's eight. So 36 plus eight gives us 44. Now we need the mole ratio to compare the unknown to the known. We're solving for water and we know propane. So there's four moles of water for every one mole of propane. Finally, we wanna convert this answer to grams. To convert from moles to grams, we need to multiply by the molar mass of the substance. But which substance are we trying to find the mass of? Is it the propane or the water? Well, the question asks for the mass of the water. So this last step is going to multiply by the molar mass of water. Water has one oxygen and two hydrogens. The molar mass of oxygen is 16. There are two hydrogens and the molar mass of hydrogen is one. So 16 plus two will give us 18. 45.3 divided by 44 times four over one times 18 gives us 74.1 grams of water. Let's try one more example. We're gonna move a bit faster on this one. Propane burns in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor according to the following balanced chemical equation. If 45.3 grams of propane burns in an excess amount of oxygen gas, how many liters of carbon dioxide gas will be produced? This one's a bit different because we're bringing in another unit, liters of gas. So we're going to need to convert our answer to liters of carbon dioxide gas. Remember from a previous lesson that one mole of any gas has a volume of 22.4 liters. So we'll use the conversion factor, 22.4 liters over one mole. So 45.3 grams of propane divided by its molar mass of 44 grams times a mole ratio of three over one, and then multiply by the conversion factor, 22.4 liters per mole. We get an answer of 69.2 liters of carbon dioxide.